um, continue from where I left off last week. We are talking about something better. Something better on the series of the paradigm shift. The paradigm shift. The paradigm shift. The paradigm shift. Paradigm shift because since Jesus died, if you have not noticed, things have changed. Tell the person sitting next to you, since Jesus died, if you have not noticed, things have changed. And there's a paradigm shift, so I'm starting with something better. And as we go on, we will see many of the things that have shifted. Now, if you read 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. Okay, you're giving it to me there. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. That means that scripture corrects. Scripture reproves. So when you come to church, many times there will be things that as we interpret Bible, you would have to go and make adjustment and correction too. It's a part of Christian life. If you go to a church and you are there for years and you don't make adjustment to your way of thinking, maybe you should stop church. Because they are not helping you. Are you here? Because Christianity is not an event, it's a process. It is not a ceremony. We are all in the process of becoming like Christ. So every day when we come to church, we hear things, we go and adjust. Uh, I was telling uh, the other two services, you know, I have something in common with monkeys. You know, we all eat banana. Yes. Yes. I have something in common with monkeys. We eat banana. And I have something in common with fishes. You know, we like to swim, although I'm not any good at. And I have another thing in common with witches. We like to fly. Yes, because I like to fly. When I'm in the airplane, I love it. You know, so that's what I have in common with witches. So if you're flying, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you here? And I'm told that the people that are pilots that fly, they have to always keep checking with the guys concerning their readings. Because if you are just a little bit off, even one point off, by the time you realize you are in another country. So you are flying, you are coming to Ghana, by the time you realize you are in Ethiopia. So one of the things that a pilot is supposed to know how to do is calculate to be a pilot. So if you are here, you want to fly, and your mass is not good like me. You know, my mass, my mass was terrible in school. You know, second service, one of my uh, 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 old school teachers was in the service. My mass is very bad. Was bad. Yeah, English, I was so good. Literature, I love it. Government, history, I love it. Mass, terrible. So when I was going to marry, I made sure I marry somebody that knows mass. My wife knows mass. So if you don't know mass and you marry someone who also don't know mass, that's your problem. You know, that's your fault. That's not anybody's fault, you know. <laughs> you, know you balance the equation. You know, the Chinese say something. I had one Chinese friend of mine who, who, who said, uh, you know, if, you're, if your father is poor, that's not your fault. But if your father-in-law is poor, that's your fault. <laughs> because you, you chose, now you chose them. <laughs> so, so we, we need to make sure that we keep on adjusting to be accurate so that we don't lead you astray. Else we will lead people astray. And pastors that don't read their Bible and check with the Bible all the time so that we know we are doing the right thing, lead their people astray. Are you here? So let's, let's, let's try and do some work. Give me Colossians chapter 2, 
Now, I was in Malaysia once. I was in Malaysia once, and uh, I went to preach. But the people that were coming to pick me from the airport did not know me. So when they came, they came with um, uh, my picture, you know. So they would have my picture. They would look at it in the crowd, and they are coming there. Okay, this, no, this cannot be Pastor Joshua. He's not handsome enough. Yes, uh, yes. Then they look at the picture and, and finally I came. And they saw, oh, this is the man. They picked me up, put me in the car. And then when they put me in the car, imagine, whilst they put me in the car, the guy said, hey, Pastor Joshua. He's holding the picture. Hey, Pastor Joshua, how are you? What will you eat? Should we take you to the hotel or should you? You, you know why you're laughing? You're laughing. Why? Because the picture cannot talk. The picture was only for them to identify me. Once I have been identified, the picture is not necessary. The Old Testament is there as a picture to point us to Jesus Christ. So everything in the Old Testament is there to point us to Jesus Christ. Are you here? Hearing what I'm saying. Everything in the Old Testament was not reality. Okay, watch this. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in question of food and drink. Now, how many of you know that in the Old Testament, there were a lot of issues of food, what food to eat, what drink to eat, uh, what drink to drink, or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. Next. These are a shadow of things to come. These are a shadow of things or were a shadow of things to come. But the substance belongs to Christ. So everything you see in the Old Testament was many of those things were a shadow of things to come. For example, the oil was not the real Holy Spirit. It was a shadow of things to come. Now in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit, the real thing has been given. So we should stop pouring oil. Shadow. Tell somebody, stop chasing shadows. In the Old Testament, building, for example, was where God dwelt. In the New Testament, the real thing has come. God no longer dwells in buildings. He dwells in us, human beings. Uh-oh, I'm going to say something. So no need for building cathedrals. God don't dwell in cathedrals. If we are looking, they are made, God don't dwell in cathedrals. If we think that building a cathedral will cause God to come and dwell in Ghana, we will be waiting for a long time. God dwells in us. There are churches that meet at Golden Tulip. Do you know what they do in some of those rooms? But after they leave, when they come and meet there, God appears. Why? Because God does not dwell in the room in Golden Tulip. He dwells in the people that came to meet there. <laughs> Paradigm shift. So when you think like that, you are spending millions of dollars building a cathedral instead of spending money to build people. Uh-oh. You are spending millions of dollars building cathedrals instead of spending millions of dollars building people. Because that's where God lives. I'm not saying we don't need buildings, but when we are building, we just need a building that is comfortable enough for all of us to, to stay in. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we need a comfortable building so that we can all meet and be comfortable. Right, So that if I'm preaching and I'm keeping long, you don't say, Pastor, I want to go quickly. Because I went to a church in Nigeria. It was so nice. Fully nyanya. The place was nice. I didn't know we spent five hours. The seat was so comfortable. When you are sitting, it's like you are sitting in a movie theater. When I looked at my time, we were there eight, two o'clock. We were still there. I didn't realize. When I looked, I said, we've been here till two. Wow. Building more there. Yes, but God does not dwell in that building. Are you here? Now, 
give me Hebrews 11. Let's see if we, we, Hebrews 11, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is assurance of things hopeful, the conviction of things not seen. Faith is a substance of things hopeful, the conviction of things not seen. Now, before, when you will hear people preach about faith, they will say, this is the definition of faith. This is not the definition of faith. The Bible is not a dictionary. It doesn't give definitions. It gives contextual meaning. So, the faith he's talking about here is Old Testament faith. Old Testament faith is an assurance of things hopeful, the conviction of things not seen. So the faith of the Old Testament people was a hope they did not have. They believed in it, they didn't have. Okay, so in the Old Testament, what happened was that they all believed that in the future, a Messiah was going to come and save them, and they acted in faith towards that, but they never met the Messiah, never saw the Messiah, and they believed in a promise they did not receive. So Old Testament faith is different from New Testament faith. Abraham's faith is different from our faith. If you are, if you are practicing Abraham's faith, you will never make it. Uh-oh. Yes. I just threw a bomb. For all your life, that's what you've been trying to do. Faith like Abraham. New Testament faith is not Abraham's faith. Hebrews 11, 4. 4, jump to 4. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts, and through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. Now, watch this. If our faith is Abel's faith, then we should go and sacrifice animals. But we can't sacrifice animals and call it faith because the real thing has come. Christ is now our sacrifice. So Abel's faith is not our faith. Abel's faith is not our faith. Go to verse 10. Let's, verse 10. I know it's, that's why the series is called Paradigm Shift. It's always been there. Just that we don't preach the gospel so people don't know. We preach ourselves. We preach our experience. Your experience is not what validates the word of God. For he was looking forward to the city that was, has foundations whose designer and builder is God. Next. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive even when she was past the age. Since she considered him faithful, who had promised? Next. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead, that is Abraham, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of the sun by the seashore. Next. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised. All of them could not receive the things that we have in the New Testament because Jesus had not died. Abraham's faith is not our faith. Noah's faith is not our faith. So what the Hebrew writer is doing is that he's telling you the faith of Abraham and he's about to tell you our faith. What is our faith? As New Testament believers, now that Jesus has died, what has changed? Go to Luke, uh, uh, Hebrews. Hebrews. Now, now go to Hebrews. Hebrews, I'm not going to go to Galatians. Go to Hebrews uh, 39. Let's start reading from 39. And all these, though commended, though through their faith, did not receive what was promised. Okay, 40. 
since God had provided something better for us. That part from, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Next. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and every sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance and race that is set before us. Next. Looking unto Jesus, that means looking away from Abraham, looking away from Noah, looking away from Abel, and now we look unto Jesus, who is the founder or the author and the perfecter of our faith. New Testament faith is perfected faith. New Testament faith is perfected faith. It is complete faith. Abraham did not have complete faith because the Messiah had not come. New Testament faith is perfect faith. Perfected faith. Are you here? Are you here? Now, now, now I, 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 I don't know about you, but I heard a story about a guy that sat in the airplane. Now, he sat in the airplane, and whilst he was sitting, they were serving food in the airplane. So, they'll bring the food. They say, oh, you know, I won't eat. They bring the food. and say, I won't eat. They bring the food. I won't eat. 13-hour flight. They fly. Shoom. They drop. So, once they drop, there's a lady in the plane that saw that he wasn't eating. So, he walked to him and said, hey, how are you, my Christian brother? How is it? You know, I saw that you were fasting and you didn't eat in the plane. Oh, man, I was so impressed. I said, God bless you. Could you pray with me? The guy said, I'm not even a Christian. Oh, so why didn't you eat? I didn't have money. Hey, you don't need money in the plane. The food was part of your ticket. So, so watch this now. Watch this. When he bought the ticket, the food and everything was available, right? In the ticket. When you bought the ticket of Jesus and you came into Christ, everything was made available in the ticket that you bought when you believed in Jesus you stepped in the faith you stepped in the faith there is healing in the atonement there is a blessing in the atonement that's what we call the finished work of Christ so the believer's faith is in God, the finished work of Jesus. It is done. When Jesus said it was finished, he was not acting Indian film. Indian film, when they kill you, it takes about three hours before you die. When he said it was finished, it was finished. So whatever you need is in when you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior and you come into the faith. So you are already in faith. Faith is not a tool that you use. Okay, this is what they taught us. When you need a child, you go and pick up your faith and use it. When you've received a child, you put the faith down. When you need money, you go and pick up the faith and use it. When the money is, is calm, you put it down. No, no. The believer does not pick up faith and live. He lives in faith. The just shall live by faith. Faith is a lifestyle. It is the plane that we live in. Faith is how we live. So that's why when things happen, we don't even see it because we are living in faith. That's why Paul will say, I'm not moved by what I see because that is our lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of faith. We live in faith. It's not a tool to use. I'm believing God. I didn't see So the believer, watch this, the believer is not living, my God, he's not living in doubt looking for proof. Next week I'm going to talk about justification of 
by faith. When I finish, I will make sure all of you, those that really, most of you are not born again. I'm telling you, most of you are not born again. Because you cannot be born again until you heard the message. How would they believe unless you preach? So what you preach depends on what people will believe. So if you don't preach the right thing, they cannot believe in the right thing to be saved. Preaching to be saved is not that, hey, yes, that's not gospel. Most people have never heard the gospel. What's the gospel? Jesus died, was buried, and resurrected. I believe in what he did. I have rested my faith in that. So now I'm also dead, buried, and I've resurrected with him with new life. I have the spirit of Christ in me. I now live for him. That's the gospel. If you are here and you don't believe that, you are not a Christian. Because you never heard the message. You never heard the message. How can they believe unless they hear? The accuracy of the message is essential for belief. Next week I'll talk about justification by faith. So your faith is rested in the finished work of Christ. It's done. Jesus is not going to come and die again. It's done. How do I appropriate what he did? It's when I put my faith and I rest in him. So I stop praying some prayers. Every altar, every altar, that the man, I, I, I break that curse, I break that curse. You are cursed? You are cursed? If you have a bad dream, instead of waking up and putting your faith in the finished work of Christ, you preach more doubt. You pray more doubt. You pray more in fear. The Christian life is resting your faith in the finished work of Jesus. It is done. It is complete. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. You are blessed because you are in the plane. You are blessed. You're, listen, you cannot blame. God told me, don't blame me for not being able to receive what I've already made available for you. What you need to learn is how to receive from God. All your life, when you, if you get this, you will rest. That's why the Bible says that the children of Israel, Hebrew says it, that they never entered into their rest. Because they did not believe in the finished work. It is done. It is complete. Every time when they left Egypt, every time they hear, hey, they thought they were about to die. Because they could not believe that he who the son of God shall set free is free indeed. Finish work. It is done. It is complete. Rest your faith in that. You know, I used to read, let me close with this. I used to read Peter when he walked on water. And I thought that was, you know, I preach, I said that was the worst thing that happened to Peter. That when he was walking on water, he drowned. But that was the best thing that happened to Peter. Peter's first walk on water was Old Testament faith. He heard Jesus say, bid me to come. And he walked on water. So he was walking on water by his own strength, alone. Then he began to sink. And he cried out to Jesus and Jesus came and pulled him out and then held his hand and now both of them walked on water for the second time and this time the walk he walked on water he walked with Jesus. And that is what you need. You need to put your faith in Christ. That is the Christian walk. Walk the walk of Christ. The walk of faith. My God, my God. Give me Galatians 2.20 and I'll close with that. Galatians 2.20 for 2.20, 2.20. 
I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God. I live by the faith in the, not my faith. I live by the faith in the Son of God. New Testament faith is living by the faith of Jesus Christ. When we pray for the sick, it's not based on what we have done. It's not based on our prayer. It's based on the faith we have in the finished work. When we pray for deliverance, it's based on the faith we have in the finished work. That's Christianity. That's Christianity. So today, open your heart and receive what God has already made available for you through Jesus Christ. Stand to your feet. Oh, yabakasko neheya. Era maske mahande le bahasko. Era mahaske na mahara bahaso. Ore mara kasora baha. Listen, the angels are already serving the blessing. They are already serving everything that is in the kingdom. It's up to you to just take it. It's up to you to just receive it. Let our hearts be receptive. Let our minds be alert. In the name of Jesus. Say, my heart is receptive. My mind is alert to receive from the hand of God. And this morning, I receive from the hand of God. I receive from the hand of God. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Receive from the hand of God. I receive from the hand of God. Era mahasta. Lando reba kada basho da baha. Randa raba shanda raba kaya. Ele mo sonde le betaya ha. Era maraba kande le bataya baha. Rando rama shanda baha. You are looking for healing? Receive it from the hand of God. You are looking for deliverance? Receive it from the hand of God. You are looking for provision, receive it from the hand of God. Let our hearts be open, let our minds be alert so that we can receive from the hand of God. We receive from your hand, we eat from your hand, we receive from your hand. There is healing in the atonement 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 there is provision made in the atonement we rest in your finished work we rest in your power we rest in your grace we rest in your finished work we receive from your hand we rest in your finished work we receive from your hand we receive from your hand you ain't you ancient Zion's king Kados, you were mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kados, Kados, you were mighty on your throne. There's a reason why the New Testament says a double-minded person can receive nothing from the Lord. Do you know why? Because a double-minded person is not resting their faith in the finished work of Christ. They still think that they have to do something to get the healing. They don't know that they have to gain more understanding on how to receive. They think they have to pay money to do it. They think they have to go and bury oil at, behind their house. Our faith is rested in the finished work of Christ. He has done it. It is done. What you need to be asking, help me to receive. 
Help me to understand. Help me to receive. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning, anyone looking for healing, I pray in the name of Jesus, quick healing in people's bodies in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, there's somebody that you are shaking. You shake. You shake. Your hands shake. Your hands shake. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. I rebuke every stroke, every stroke in here because of the atonement of Jesus Christ. I rebuke every chronic disease. I rebuke every chronic disease. I rebuke every chronic disease. Let it dry out in Jesus' name. Let it dry out in Jesus' name. Any growth in your body, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. You will not perish. You will not die. You will live to fulfill the glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray. And let the church say amen. You may be seated.